contains a binary, a uh, bunch of zeros, one, zero, one, 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 and that describes the Merkle path that you have to walk down to find the transaction for that transaction to be as valid. What does this mean? So this is what it, this is what it would look like. So if you have a coin who is ID is six, then that would be the Merkle path. That would be the only that Merkle path would be the only place in the Merkle tree that a transaction spending a coin with ID number six can be included. So what it, right, so what does this mean? Well, the main benefit here, right, is um, that basically the amount of data that clients need to process goes down by a lot. So in uh, Plasma, if you, or traditional uh, kind of minimal viable Plasma, if you have a Plasma chain, and this Plasma chain in each block has a block size of n, and the Plasma chain continues for t steps, then every user of the Plasma chain has to download and process every Plasma block, so the overhead is n times t. So here, you might notice that a user actually only needs to verify this, the, the availability and correctness of the plasma chain only at the specific index that they want to spend. So, or, or sorry, over the specific index of the coin, of, of any coins that they own and any coins that they care about. So if I have 15 coins, then I would only need to look at the plasma chain in, at uh, 15 positions. So what does this mean? Well, if someone has C coins, then the overhead goes down to roughly C <coughs> multiplied by T multiplied by log N over C. So the C basically is how many coins you have. The T means that, well, you have to keep track of a Merkle branch for every single block in the plasma chain, and log N because there's N, because there's N different objects in the, or the uh, plasma block has size N. Log N over C instead of log N, basically because if you have multiple coins, then the Merkle proofs have a tiny bit of redundancy to them. So, for every single block in the plasma chain, you need, if in that block, there was a transaction that spent the coin that transferred the owner, then you want a proof of that that, uh, that coin is there, and basically you need a proof that you know you have a history and that this history forms this chain that goes all the way back to whenever the coin was deposited. And for every block in which the plus, that particular coin is not spent, you just need a proof of non-inclusion, so basically just a Merkle proof pointing to that same index in the tree, where at that particular index in the Merkle tree, you just have empty data. So, Log in, basically log in, per, uh, log in over, uh, per block, and that's basically all that an individual user needs to care about. So what does this mean in practice? Well, let's say you are a cryptocurrency exchange, and you are processing orders on, you know, you have an order matching engine, you have an order book, but you do not want to become the next known guys. And so, well, maybe you want to integrate Plasma, right? Maybe you want to design an exchange in such a way that you do not actually have control over people's money. Instead, you are just the order matching engine, and it's the users that have the private keys and you have a plasma system that ensures that regardless of what happens through the exchange, users can always run through the plasma exit procedure and get their money out. So, one problem. Well, let's say your exchange is very high.